Dear learners, hope you are all doing good. From our earlier modules, you would have become acquainted with lists and tuples. Here in this module, there are two parts, one on dictionary and another on date time operations in Python. In this part of the module of our online course, we are going to present you the dictionary the data structure present in python and you will also learn how the dictionaries are created accessed adding and removing elements from them and various methods and built in functions etc python scripts without dictionaries are quite unimaginable dictionaries can be easily changed can go smaller and can grow larger at runtime. They shrink and grow without the necessity of making copies. So, what is a dictionary? Python dictionary is an unordered collection of items. All the other data types have a single value as an element, but a dictionary as a key value pair. For example, one colon triple x within double quotes. Here, 1 is the key and triple x is the value. Colon indicates the key value pair. The key value pair is also called as an item. Is it not similar to the dictionary which we use for finding the meaning of a word? So, a dictionary in python works similar to the dictionary what we use in real world. The keys of a dictionary shall be unique and may be of data types such as strings, integers and tuples. The value against a key can be any of the python data types. Now, shall we see how to create a dictionary? In python, we can create a dictionary by placing sequence of items within curly braces separated by comma. An item as a key and the corresponding value stated as a pair that is key colon value. The values can be of any data type and can be duplicated. Keys must be of immutable type such as string, number or tuple with immutable elements and must be unique. Try the example on the console to create a dictionary. Here you can see how to create a dictionary in multiple ways. Example 1 shows how to create an empty dictionary and example 2 shows how to create a dictionary with integer key. So, as you can see here, when you do not include any key value pair, it creates an empty dictionary and when you print it, it will just print the curly braces. Suppose, if you include any key value pair as you are seeing, it creates a dictionary. Here too, we can see some more examples for creating dictionary. In example 3, we create a dictionary with strings as keys. In example 4, we create dictionary with mixed keys. In example 5, we create dictionary with mixed keys and values that is with string and list. When you run this, you can see the output as you are seeing now. So, for the first example, there is an empty dictionary and second example, the keys are integers and in the third example, the keys are string. Example 4 and 5 produce keys with multiple types. You would have noticed that an empty dictionary can be created by just placing curly braces. We can also create a dictionary using the built in function dict. See how to use the dict. So, here what you see is the creation of dictionary using dict function and you can also create a dictionary item as a pair what you are seeing on the screen. So, when you run the previous script, you get the output as you are seeing now. So, for the first example, we get the output as one with i value as apple and so on. Similarly, when we have used each item as a pair, we get a similar dictionary. What would happen when you use the same key? Try and see.
so here we are trying to create an item whose key gets repeated see 2 is repeated twice so when such a scenario occurs the python interpreter creates only one item pair with a recent key value pair so we are getting one with apple and two with mangoes two with grapes got overwritten here make a note that dictionary keys are case sensitive same name but different cases of key will be treated distinctly from the examples just now we saw you would have understood that values can be of any data type and can repeat but keys must be of immutable type such as numbers strings tuples and must be unique here note that i have mentioned tuple can be keys we will try an example for this case too so this example shows how to use a tuple to create the key value pair so in this example the first key is created by using a tuple and you can also see the output when you run this having seen a dictionary shall we write a program that creates a dictionary which has the keys representing the states in our country and the values as their capital so here what you see is we are creating a dictionary called state capital whose key value pair represent the name of the state and the corresponding capital city so we have created for almost all the states in our country so when we print it we can get the all the states along with the city is it not so easy okay now let us see how to access the elements of a dictionary we are going to use the script which creates a dictionary of states in india and their capitals so this slide shows how to access individual elements of a dictionary in the first example we are trying to find the value associated with the key kerala in second example we are finding the values associated with the key tamil nadu and there is another way we can also use get method to find the corresponding value of a given key so you can see these three examples over the screen have we noted the get method in the previous example that shows you can also access the dictionary elements using the built in get method what would be the answer if you access the dictionary using the values instead of a key try by yourself having seen how to create and access the elements in a dictionary what is next next is how to add remove and modify an item in a dictionary dictionary are mutable objects in python we can add new items or change the value of the existing items when adding an item if the key is already present value gets updated else a new key value pair is added to the dictionary let us try this now already we have a key called andhra pradesh but whose capital was mentioned only hyderabad but now we are trying to add amravati along with hyderabad that is going to be the capital after 10 years so after adding this when you print you can see the change gets reflected in the output and in the next example we are adding a new key called puducherry which is not present in the dictionary originally and we are adding the corresponding capital city as pondicherry so when you print the dictionary now you can see along with the other states puducherry gets added clear now we will delete or remove an item there are options available to remove or delete an item or the entire dictionary let us see them one by one the functions such as pop and pop item can also be used for removing a specific value and an arbitrary value from a dictionary respectively so here you can see how to delete items from a dictionary we are trying to pop the key puducherry so which we have just now added 
and once you have popped out that item would have been removed from the dictionary and when you print you can see other states and to remove an arbitrary item you can just give pop item as you are seeing which will remove any arbitrary state in India then you can print and see which one was got removed find the output by yourself next all the items from a dictionary can be deleted at once by using clear method so here you can see how to clear all the items from your dictionary at once using the clear method uh, so once you have cleared when you print the dictionary it you can see only empty dictionary so after clearing when you print as I told you, you can get only the empty dictionary. In Python dictionary, using del keyword, deletion of keys can be done. Using this keyword, specific values from a dictionary as well as the whole dictionary can be deleted. Here you can see how to delete a particular item. So, here I am deleting the state Bihar using del keyword. After deleting when you print the dictionary you can see all the states excluding bigger instead of deleting an item in a dictionary one by one you can also delete the entire dictionary just by giving the name as it is shown here del the dictionary name after that when you try to print the dictionary you will get an error as you are seeing because clear will clear the contents of the dictionary but an empty dictionary will be there but they will delete the entire dictionary including the dictionary itself right so you have learned how to add into and remove elements from a dictionary let us now have a look into the other methods of dictionary apart from get clear pop pop item etc the methods are copy values string that is str set default keys items type etc see the table which shows the meaning of these method here you can see the list of dictionary methods which we can use we will see how to use these methods one by one please go through the script on the console which explain the use of these methods so the first method is values so this method returns the values of the each item present in the dictionary so as you are seeing here we are giving the dictionary name dot values which will list all the values that is in our example capitals in the dictionary then next method is str method this method produces a printable string representation of a dictionary then the next method is set default this method returns the value of a key if the key is in dictionary else it inserts the key with the value to the dictionary the general syntax of set default is dictionary name dot set default with two arguments one is key and the second argument is optional default value if you do not give default value none will be considered so key is the key to be searched in the dictionary and default value is the value to be inserted in the dictionary if key is not in the dictionary here you can see an example of how to use set default method we have a dictionary of fruits wherein we have four items now i am trying to add one more item one more key five which is not present in the dictionary so if the key is not present in the dictionary which gets added but there is no value so the value will be set as none as you are seeing here again we have one more example for set default this time we are adding the key 5 along with the value optional value mango since we have given the value an item 5 comma mango gets added to the dictionary as an item which you can see as the output then next method is keys like values as values print all the values of the item keys method will print all the keys of the items in the dictionary then coming to the items this method print the key value pair 
this is just like printing a dictionary even if you just print the dictionary you get the same output similar to that dictionary name dot items if you give it will give you the items present in the list as key value pair. Next method is from keys this method creates a new dictionary with key from sequence and values the common syntax is dictionary name dot from keys with one mandatory argument sequence and followed by an optional argument value. The sequence here is the sequence of element to be used as key for the new dictionary and value which is an optional argument which is said to the each element of the dictionary. Consider an example we have a list called keys with the values 1, 2, 3 and I have another values a tuple which is having only one item as apple. Suppose if we use these two keys and values to make a dictionary we use dict dot from keys keys comma value. So, keys will be 1, 2, 3 where value will be the apple which gets repeated for all the keys. So, when you print the dictionary you get the output as you are seeing. The next method is type which returns the type of parameter passed as argument. Again we use the same fruits dictionary I am trying to print the dictionary and we are checking type of fruits. What is type of fruits? It is the dictionary that is what you are seeing as an output. Then the last method is copy which is to copy a dictionary onto a new dictionary. Here I have first dictionary named as fruits1 having 4 key value pair. We are just copying that dictionary into an another dictionary called fruits that is fruits2 equal to fruits1 dot copy. Then you are printing original dictionary and the copy dictionary we get the same output. Having seen elaborately about the dictionary methods let us now see a few built in functions that can be applied over the dictionary object. They are length, all, any, sorted etc. Let us try to work out these methods. So, the first function is len function which is used to find the number of items present in the dictionary. In our case we have 4 items so we get the answer as we will get the answer as 4 for the first example. Coming to the next method all next function all. So, this checks whether all the keys of the dictionary are true. In our case we have values for all the keys so obviously we get true as the answer. Coming to the next method function any which checks whether any of the keys of the dictionary are true. Even if any one of the keys is true then we will get true as the answer. Then coming to the last function sorted which will sort the list of keys in the dictionary. You can see the output. The output for the previous example is seen on the screen. So, as there are 4 items we got 4 as the answer for the first that is for the len function for all function we get true as the answer for any function we again get the true as the answer for sorted the keys got sorted 1, 2, 3, 4 right got how to use built in function in python dictionary. Let me pose a question recollect and tell the answer. How do you access an element in a dictionary? Yes of course you have to use the key to access an item. In our previous example if we write fruits of 1 then you will get orange as the answer. If the number of item in the dictionary is huge then you can use dictionary dot keys or dictionary dot values to get the keys and values. You can also iterate through the items in a dictionary using for loop. Let us try it now. Here we see how to iterate through the items in the dictionary using a for loop. So, we use an iterator variable fruit which iterates over the fruit dictionary. When I print fruit alone we can see all the keys in the dictionary one by one, but when I print using the index fruits of fruit when fruit is 1 we will get the answer as value apple. Similarly, when we iterate over the fruits keys of the fruits we will get all the values present in the dictionary. So, this is the output for the previous example 
totally there were 4 items in the list, items in the dictionary and the first item is apple along with the key 4 and for the second item is orange along with key 1 and so on. Okay. Suppose you want to check whether a key is present in a dictionary. How do we check? This demonstrates how to check for the presence of a key. Again we consider our good old fruit example. So, we have 4 fruits. So, I am checking if 3 in fruits that is whether key 3 is present in fruits. Uh, obviously, it is present. So, we will get key 3 is present and I am checking if 6 is present, but 6 is not that obviously, we will get key is not present. Anyway, you try by yourself. Then do you remember the membership operators such as in, not in which we have explained in the module on operators and expression there itself we have seen how to use in and not in operators in a lighter way. Let us revise it. We can test if a key is present in a dictionary or not using the keyword in and not in. Keep in mind that the membership test is only for the keys not for the values. So, here we are testing the presence of a particular key in the dictionary using in and not in op. So, again we use the same fruits dictionary. We are first printing the fruits which will list all the items present in the dictionary. Then I am checking 4 in fruits, 2 in fruits. Obviously, 4 and 2 is present. They are keys. So, we get true true as the answer. But as I told you, you cannot check for the presence of values. You can check only for keys. So, when I check for apple in fruits or apple not in fruits, we are getting answer as false and true because it is not possible to check values in the dictionary only we can check for the presence of keys. Next, I am going to touch upon next dictionary in a lighter way. So, you will learn how to create next dictionary, access elements, modify them and so on with the help of a few examples. What is a next dictionary? In Python, a next dictionary is a dictionary inside another dictionary that is it is a collection of dictionaries into one single dictionary. Please observe the general syntax for the nested dictionary. So, here we see how to create a nested dictionary. So, keys are dictionary dict 1, dict 2 are all keys and each value is again a dictionary. So, I have shown you an example also and you can print and see how this dictionary gets displayed. So, when you run that nested dictionary example, you get, you get the output as you are seeing here. Then, how to access the individual elements of a nested dictionary? Have a look on to the console. So, here again we have considered the same nested dictionary which we have just now created. So, when you print students of 1 with name, then we get the first student's name and similarly, when we exercise the second student name we get the answer from the second dictionary and the third example students of 3 with department then we will get ECE as the answer you just guess the output and work by yourself. Now, let us try to add a new element to the dictionary here is an example for the same. So, how do we add an element to the dictionary? So, here already the dictionary contains 4 elements uh, that is 4 items. Now, we are trying to add the fifth item. Initially, we make an empty item. When you print, it prints empty for the fifth element. Next, we are trying to add the fifth element. So, what are the values of the fifth element? It should be name, age, department. So, for the fifth element, first we are adding the name, then we are adding the age, then department gets added. Then when we print students, we can see the fifth element along with all the four elements which were previously present in the dictionary. Then what is next? Of course, deleting an item. Observe the console. So, here the same dictionary we took del students of 2. If I give like this, then the second student gets deleted. That is the key with the value 2 gets deleted. So, when you print the students, you can see the output where 
there is no key with two all the other keys are present ok. We have come to the end of the dictionary in python the remaining part of this module teaches you how to manipulate date and time in python with the help of examples. Now let us look into the date and time functions in python let us develop a simple program related to date and time there is no data type for date in python but python has a module called date time to work with date and time in order to use the module we have to import it into the script a module can be imported in a script using the import statement a module as a collection of variables functions classes etc in order to make use of them we need to import the module with an import statement we will dig further on modules and import in forthcoming module for the time being let us just consider that we need to import the required module the date the date time module has several classes some of the commonly used classes include date time date time time delta classes ok how do we get the current date and time watch the screen for the function so here as I told you we have imported the date time module once we have imported we can use all the classes presented in that module so first we are using the date class in the date class there is a method called today which we are invoking that will return the today's date so when you print that you will get the today's date and there is another way which can be used to find the today's date along with current time so for which we have to use date time class present in the date time module date time class as a method called now which will fetch you the current date along with current time so when you print that now time you can see today's date along with time the date will be in the format of year month and date got today's date and time did you notice the format in which today's date has been printed it is in year month date format we have many formatting options let us have a glance the strf time method is defined under classes date date time and time classes this method can be used to format the date and time in a number of formats the strf time method takes one or more format codes and returns a formatted string based on the format code the various format codes can be seen on the console here you can see different format codes that can be used with strf time function if you use percentage y or percentage y either in small or upper case you can see the year similarly for percentage month you can see month and percentage d for the day etc so we will try how to use these format codes see the script which demonstrate the use of the various format codes over the screen so here as we have done earlier we have imported the date time module and we have used date class today's method to find the today's date and we are applying strf time on the today's object to format in various ways so the first formatting is today dot strf time with percentage m percentage d and percentage y this will print the date in month date and year format suppose you want to print only the day of the week then use percentage a for suppose today is friday then you get the answer as friday for this then month of the year it will print the month for example if the month is march you will get march as answer suppose you want to print the uh, today's date along with current time then you can use percentage m hyphen perc percentage d hyphen percentage y percentage h for hour percentage m for minute and percentage s for second you can also print the year using today dot year attribute or today dot month for month and today dot day for day when you run that script you can see the output what you are seeing now you try by yourself in some occasions we may need to find the difference between two dates for example 
we would like to find the difference between today's date and a previous set date. How do you write? See the script on the screen. So, here as we have done earlier, we have imported date time module and we use date class and today's method of that class to find today's date and we are creating one object called then which is set for the date what we prefer. So, I am setting the date as 2019 second month 18th day. So, this is the previous date then is set. So, when you print then you get 2019 to 18. Now, I want to find the difference between today and then date. So, you just subtract today minus then. Then if you print difference in days you can see what is the number of days between today's date and previously set date. Python time class let us set a time value for instance note the monitor. So, here as we have set for the date we can also set the time here we use time method of the date time class first we are setting the time as suppose if we do not pass any argument to the time method the time will be set to 0 hour 0 minute and 0 second. Suppose if you want to set it to a sum value you can pass uh, what is the hour value, minute value and second value. Then you can print and see what is in time 1 and what is in time 2. You can try by yourself. As we set a date and time in our previous example, we too can set time along with a date. How do we do it? Observe the console. So, here we are setting one date time 2018 is the year, 3 is the month, 8 is the date. And as we have not given any time value, the time will be set as 0 hour, 0 minute and 0 second. So, when you print this, you can see 2018 3 8 0 0 0 0 0 0. And in the next date time, that is date time 2 is set to a new value, but this time we are giving our minute and second. So, again we have some of few statements which will help you to understand how to print the year, month, day or minute, second individually also. So, for this script you can see the output on the screen. That is all we have come to the end of this module. To recapitulate this module contains two topics dictionary, date and time. Dictionaries in a programming language is a type of data structure used to store the information that are related in some way. In Python, a dictionary is defined by two elements namely keys and values. Dictionaries do not store their information in any particular order. So, sometimes you may not get back in the order you entered it. Some points to ponder on dictionary include keys will be unique, the values in the dictionary can be of any type while the keys must be immutable like numbers, tuple or strings. Dictionary keys are the case sensitive, same key name but with different cases considered as different keys in Python dictionaries. We have discussed various operations like adding, removing and updating items. Also we wrote scripts for illustrating the various methods of dictionary and built in functions that can be applied on a dictionary. Finally, we saw how to create and work with nested dictionary. In the second part, we saw the classes for manipulating the date and time in both simple and complex ways. The date time module provides different classes, date class to manipulate just date alone, time class to manipulate time alone, date time class combination of time and date. Okay, right. I will see you shortly in the next module. Have a good day. Thank you.